Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and what I want to do um, is talk about how to export uh, FBX uh, motion data from uh, Shogun Post. Um, so I've brought my motion in, okay, into Shogun Post, and one of the first things we want to look at is the actual export settings of Shogun Post. So we can get those here if we go General, uh, go Preferences. And the last tab here is export settings. So a couple of things I want to draw your attention to here are A, obviously we want to select export. And secondly, we want to make sure that this says Y up, okay? So I think the default scene will actually have your character come in kind of sideways, 90 degrees out um, when you bring it into Motion Builder um, uh, or Maya, okay? Um, so we want to select Y up, okay? So make sure that's got Y up. Uh, and then the other thing to think about is um, whether we have this selected or not. So um, what we can do is if this is unselected, uh, what it will do is it will export everything in our scene. So it will export all the tracking markers, it will export all the cameras, uh, as well as the joint information. Okay, um, So that's a lot of extra information to bring into your pipeline if you don't need it. Okay, So quite often what I like to do, uh, if everything's going well and I don't need that data, um, is strip that data out. So I tend to go selected objects only. So <coughs> that's the main settings to look at there. OK, so I'm going to close that. And the next thing I want to do is actually just look at uh, selecting uh, the settings, uh, selecting the bits that I want to export. So uh, what we want to do is make sure that our selection panel is on. So if I go onto the panels here, it shows all the panels. And make sure that this selection panel is open. We've got it open here already. But if you don't have it open, just click on there. Look and I'll open up the selection panel, great. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to explore uh, the subject named Will, okay? Uh, and that was named in our capture session. And what we're going to do is just twirl this down, or open it up and have a look inside. And you'll see you've got all your labeling, you've got all your trackers in here. This is all the information that we don't want. The bit that we do want is the solving, okay? And you can see you've got all the hips and head, neck, et cetera, et cetera. So typically what I'll do is I will, uh, I've got it twirled open just so you can see, but I'll go right click and just go select branch and it will select everything inside that branch. So that's all the joint data now. And then what we'll do is go file, uh, export. And I'll just give it a name, uh, Will Dance FBX, okay? I'm just going to shove it on my desktop in the temporary area so that because I don't actually need it now. And just give it a name and just go save. There we are, okay. Uh, what you'll see is, because it's got to flip the scene round, it will take a little while to do the export process. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pause it while it's doing that. You, you, you can actually see that it's, uh, so you can actually see that it has actually, uh, it's, it's still in the middle of exporting and you can see it's kind of flipped our, scene over okay i can't really see it very well here but it's flipped it over and now it's finished it's kind of flipped it back okay great um, so that's really the exporting process the final thing i really wanted to point out as well is something to look for when you're going through this process is the subject name because that will affect how the joints are labeled okay and what you want is um, if you've got a single session and you've got multiple takes in that session and you want to be able to work with those together inside a motion builder easily uh, one of the things that can help is to make sure that that subject has the same name in all of the uh, motion uh, performances that you're exporting from Shogun Post. So if everything you've done in a motion capture session is right, then it should be the case that these are the same. But sometimes you might, you know, recalibrate it or just change the subject name halfway through for some reason. Um, uh, uh, the name of the subject, sorry, i.e. the person uh, halfway through. Um, in which case, what you want to do is just rename this, okay? Uh, 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 yeah, rename this uh, so that it works. And the way that I tend to run a session is, is I tend to once I've got a subject set up in my motion capture, I will um, I will capture a single T pose for one or two seconds, something like that, uh, maybe five seconds, something like that, and then that allow me is is all the other takes that I do, all the other motion capture takes that I do, um, I don't need the person, the actor, to kind of start 
in a T pose at that point. So uh, it just frees the actor up, okay? Uh, and you'll see uh, in my retargeting session how I can do the retarget based on that single T pose. But again, in order to facilitate that, I need to make sure that that's got a consistent name. So if ever you come in here and it doesn't have the right name, it's very easy to just rename that. You can just click on here, make sure you've got the attributes um, uh, the attribute uh, window open, okay? And then just rename here. So I'll just call it Will2, just for it, an example here. And you'll see it's renamed that to Will2, and if I export it now, that will be called Will2, okay? So it's just a way, it's just something, another thing that you can fix at this stage uh, to make your life easier later in the pipeline. Okay, I hope you found that useful.